Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI, using Sentinel-2 satellite imagery in QGIS. So for this video, I'm assuming that you've already downloaded your Sentinel-2 satellite imagery. So if you haven't done that, then please check out my other videos for a guide on how to. So once you've got your Sentinel-2 imagery, um, we can start thinking about how to calculate NDVI. So the NDVI is a really useful tool for looking at vegetation and vegetation health. So a range of ecological and agricultural um, applications. Although it does have a few issues, which I'll come back to later on. But essentially NDVI is based around the principle that healthy green vegetation reflects a lot of the light in the near infrared band, which in our Sentinel-2 imagery is band eight and reflects very little light in the red band, which again in our Sentinel-2 imagery is band four. And you can see when I flick between the layers here that we can clearly distinguish the differences. The near infrared band is much brighter, particularly where we've got agricultural areas and healthy vegetation, while the, the red band is typically much darker. So now we've identified those, we can go ahead and calculate our NDVI. And to do that, we're going to use one of the most versatile tools in QJS, which is the raster calculator up here under the raster menu. So NDVI is essentially a ratio between near infrared and red light. So the formula to calculate it is this. Open brackets, band eight, which is our near infrared band, minus band four, which is our red band. Close brackets, divided by, open brackets again, near infrared, plus red band, close brackets. So band eight minus band four, divided by band eight plus band four. So once we've entered the formula, we can click up here to tell QJS where to save our output. So I'm just going to call this NDVI octatine.tiff because this is actually using a Sentinel-2 image from October 2018 and then click OK to run. So this should just take a few seconds to process, so be patient. And there we go. We now have our NDVI layer with high values represented by the bright whites indicating where we have a high NDVI, so lots of healthy vegetation, and low values being shown by the darker colors representing bare earth, urban areas, or in the case of the very dark values over here, actually water bodies, because water has a very low reflectance in the near infrared band. And if we zoom in, we can start to pick out some details within individual fields, um, of crop lines within those fields. Now, this default grayscale color display isn't the easiest to interpret. So actually, if we right click on our NDVI layer, go to properties and symbology, um, we can change that to single band pseudo color and pick a particular color ramp. Or what I've actually done is to prepare a QGIS style file specifically for NDVI. Um, I am going to make this available on my website, so if you'd like to get hold of that style file, head over to amdgs.co.uk to download that. We can then click OK, and now with this red-green colour ramp, you can actually see it's much easier to distinguish these small-scale variations. So quite a powerful tool for ecologists and farmers who are interested in understanding variations on quite localised scales in terms of vegetation health and crop development. And what's particularly useful is if we actually kind of start to compare these NDVI values over time. So in classic Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. So this is the NDVI for October, and this is the NDVI for June 2018, so a few months earlier. And we can see the difference here in terms of the healthy vegetation, the crops that are present in June, which have now been harvested in October, giving rise to these areas with much lower NDVI values. Um, there are some exceptions. So if we look at 
this area here, for example, um, it had quite low end DVI values in June, but actually is clearly some kind of winter crop, um, and we now have much higher end DVI values in October. And with imagery um, like Sentinel-2, which is collected on a pretty regular basis, we do actually have the potential to monitor quite closely the changes in NDVI over time. But as I mentioned earlier, NDVI isn't perfect. One issue it has in particular is a tendency to kind of saturate at the top end. So if we have a lot of healthy vegetation, it can be quite difficult to distinguish the fine variations over the area, the differences between different species. Um, so we may need to consider some other indices like the soil adjusted vegetation index or enhanced vegetation index. Um, I'm going to cover those in future videos. So please check my channel and subscribe if you're interested in finding out more about those. But for now, that's how we calculate NDVI using Sentinel-2 imagery in QGIS.